In this video, I want to talk about 5G and in particular, the business impact on 5G and how businesses can best use 5G, how they can prepare for this. And I'm very pleased to say I'm here with Paul Scanlon. You are the Chief Technology Officer of Huawei in their carrier business. Um, you know a lot about 5G, you are implementing 5G. Mm. Um, what would you say are the, the key business impacts of 5G? You know, it's uh, the challenge we have is misunderstanding about 5G. You know, it's faster, it has lower latency and massive connections. Yes? It's far more efficient than any other technology. And efficiency itself, if people understand, you know, just look at the planet, okay? If we're consuming more resources, we ought to be consuming less. And if 5G is more efficient in what it does by, in terms of consumption of energy, because of its efficiency, then surely a simple thing to educate people on is that 5G is cheaper and more efficient than 4G and consumes less power and energy and carbon dioxide and all those sorts of things because they're all related. Mm. So when we now want to talk and about how they how 5G can contribute to a um, an economic benefit or how 5G can contribute to um, to an industry sector's transformation or improvement, yes. Yeah. Then it comes down to that sector understanding 5G. What can it do? How do we do it? Yes. So an example might be in manufacturing. We know that if we can apply more sensors to the robots and we can pull that data up and analyze it in real time, we improve predictive maintenance. And if you talk with the CEOs of any of the manufacturing companies, whether they're from Germany or UK or from Brazil or Indonesia, you know, developed or developing economies, it doesn't matter these guys understand that. Mm. So their expectation that 5G will improve this, together with instead of using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and the, the challenges that they have in connectivity with those dropping in and out and mm. security and pay, all those sorts of things, they're all gone when you deploy 5G. So first of all, some industries, those people understand 5G better than other industries, and their expectation is very clear on what 5G can do. Mm. So how are they preparing? You have some extremes at one end where you see a number of, uh, of companies that are trying to buy licenses for their own private use. Mm. We, we see this already in LTE, we see what we call ELTE, so enterprise versions of LTE, where some companies have access to Spectrum and Mine, for example, and they want to have a private network mm. because they can see the benefits of those sorts of things. So a couple of industries have already realised the benefits that 5G ought to give them. What They're, do you see as the, the, the major industries then that will benefit from 5G that you're seeing in the, in the short run? Sure, so this now depends on how you, how you measure things, okay? Yeah. So if we were to measure it by, say, uh, the effect of 5G in that industry as a percentage of GDP, then manufacturing and energy seem to be the largest to it, around four to yeah. five percent, yes. Things like health is sitting about one percent. Mm -hmm. But look at the size of the health industry, you know, it's a $1.6 trillion problem. So 1% yeah. of that is significant, yes? Huge, yeah. But it could also be that, as you're saying, how do, how do um, uh, enterprises prepare themselves for 5G? It could also be that they don't understand how 5G can help their industry, yes? Mm -hmm. So take the supply chain in, in, um, in, in medication, for example, or in consumables in a hospital or anything like that. And if they were connected using an IoT chip or a 5G chip, or take virtual consultations, how much would that improve? Um, you know, the reliability and consistency, and the availability of quality care, those sorts of things. So some things are well understood, some things are not understood by different industries. Have you got any good examples of projects that Huawei is involved in where 5G is already making a difference? So we've been experimenting in, you know, manufacturing is one area, yeah. obviously drones and things like that, and everybody's been experimenting with AR and VR, but AR and VR is a very different sort of market, and I, you know, we don't have a lot of time to explain all those things. But if we were to look at, um, at things like uh, you know, Norway, we're doing a thing which I like to call facial recognition of fish. Yes? And, and, the re and the reason it's so, it's so good is because it's a collaboration between companies like um, the vendors, so it's not just Huawei, and uh, the telecom operator but also the industry people. And the targets there are very clear. Yes, it's how to improve 
the fishing business. The fishing business is agriculture, aquatic agriculture, and today you have fiber optic cables joining from the land to the ship, from the ship to the ponds where the fish are, the fish are being farmed. Mm -hmm. If we use 5G, we see 4% improvement in livestock, so more fish, healthier fish, because we're using accurate recognition to very specifically detect things like parasites. And the next phase will be, how do we you know, give them the right food so we get a healthier, better fish? So that's really the recognition of why this fish is better than that fish, those sorts of things. We save on the feed, 20% roughly, and we also see, uh, save about $150 million. And the industry does not wipe away for the industry. So these are very clear targets. They're very pragmatic things. Mm. And it's all about cost, efficiency, making more money, improving quality. It's a supply chain opportunity. Mm. Now, that didn't happen. Uh, I'll say it sort of happened accidentally, but it happened in a different way. It happened through collaboration. Mm. It happened by a couple of companies getting together and trying to understand the problem and seeing whether 5G could fix that problem. Yeah. So that's a particular example that we're, we're pretty proud of, of having been part of the process of consultation and analysis. Amazing. Looking at different robots collaborating, um, pulling you know, more sensors in robots, analysed by an AI, and then the robots self-organised to build the thing rather than linear production of, uh, of, of things. Yes, because today manufacturing is a linear process. Robot A passes to robot B, passes to robot C. But if all the robots are together, and they all know they can, a bit like AlphaGo, they can figure out the best scenario. Put in the plastic and make the spoon, or put in the plastic and out comes a cup. Yeah, amazing. So you can do those sorts of things that are very different.